It is my distinct pleasure to invite to our podium the Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray, our president of the UUA, to give her annual report. What an honor it is to stand in this podium and to see all of you. Oh, well, we are living in difficult and dangerous times. These are not ordinary times, and our work as Unitarian Universalists in our congregations, as leaders, and at the UUA must also not be ordinary. Two themes defined my first year as president. Number one, this is no time for a casual faith. And number two, this is no time to go it alone. Now, these themes shaped my earliest priorities. First, to clarify the UUA's mission and put it at the heart of all we do. And second, to strengthen relationships across our association, because when we work together in relationship focused on mission, we amplify our power as a moral force for love and justice. And right now, together, we have the enormous task of embracing bold institutional change that truly embodies the liberatory values of our faith, a beloved community where all people of all identities thrive. And so my second year as your president has been about taking this work of mission and relationship and putting systems in place to carry the institutional change work forward for the long haul. Now, Describing the work of systems is not glamorous, but it is this daily shovel work that makes the noteworthy moments possible. It is systems that make sure that change efforts last. And one part of this shovel work has been to clarify how do we actually move organizational change? How do systems shift? And this question matters not just to the UUA, but to our congregations that are also seeking to unlock the power, the impact, and the liberatory spirit of our communities. So how do you change the culture of an institution? Well, five things are essential. Number one, a clear mission and vision to name where we are headed and who we are called to be. If you don't know where you're going, anything will do, right? So you've got to be clear about mission and vision. Number two, you need leaders who are committed and invested in that vision. Without leaders who understand and are invested, an organization will not be able to create substantive change. Number three, you need ongoing skill building, because guess what? Change is not just about a mindset. Change requires specific and real skills and ongoing learning and skill development. A learning community is a change community. Number four, accountable relationships beyond the organization, because change cannot come only from within. Partnerships with directly impacted communities root us in the needs of those most impacted by systems of oppression. And then number five, strong relationships within and across the organization. Creating change for the long term requires always developing relationships, always developing leadership, and always developing increasing commitment and the power of we around the mission and vision. So this is the guide that we are using to move institutional change at the UUA. And you'll hear it echoed directly as I dive more deeply into the work of what we've been up to this year. So what comes first? Mission and vision. The UUA's core mission is threefold. Number one, to equip congregations for health and vitality. 
Number two, to train and support leaders, both lay and professional. And number three, to advance our UU values on a national and international scale. Equipping congregations. This is the work of our congregational life staff who connect, companion, challenge, and coach our congregations. It's resources like Our Whole Lives, Comprehensive Sexuality Education, our Tapestry of Faith curriculum, and our hymnals. It's resourcing ministerial transitions and the UUA pension and health plan that help congregations be good employers. Great news this year, we launched an improved online interface for ministerial search that's making it better for congregations and ministers. And for the second year in a row, we had a zero increase in premiums for the UUA health plan. That is tremendous. That Number two, second part of our mission, training and supporting leaders. That's the work we do to credential religious professionals to provide continuing education and cohort gatherings for religious professionals, lay leaders, and youth and young adults. A brand new resource we launched this year is Leader Lab. Leader Lab is an online resource that has live and on-demand courses on everything from board governance and stewardship to nurturing equity and diversity in congregations, and you can find it at uua.org Leader Lab. In addition, recognizing that we have not taken a holistic look at youth ministry in more than a decade, we are launching a strategic visioning conversation around youth ministry to identify needs and opportunities to strengthen our ministry to and with youth and to keep them in our faith. Barb and Alandria aren't the only one grown in this faith. Me too. Advancing our UU values is the outward-facing justice work we do to represent Unitarian Universalism to the wider world. It's our international partnerships and advocacy work, and it's our justice work. It's the ministry of the United Nations office, side with love, love resists, congregational advocacy, and Beacon Press. All of this is possible because of your support for the UUA and your congregation's support through the annual program fund. The UUA is the embodiment of the covenant that our congregations and communities make to each other. When you support the UUA, you are supporting each other as congregations so that all of our congregations have resources, leadership, support in times of crisis, celebration in times of joy. You are nurturing each other when you support the UUA. You are powering the mission of the UUA. And I just want to lift up that congregational support for the UUA is the single largest and most important funding for our core mission. Now, one of the ways I think about mission and vision is that mission keeps us grounded. It reminds us of our core work. But vision, vision helps us soar. Part of the hope for this 2019 General Assembly and the upcoming year is to be in discernment across our association about our vision for Unitarian Universalism, the power of we. Now, while this is in progress, we at the UUA have articulated an operational vision to guide the changes that we must live into at the UUA. Our vision at the UUA is to create a UUA in which the aspirations of Unitarian Universalism as a beloved anti-racist, anti-oppressive, multicultural faith community are reflected. A UUA in which people of color and indigenous people, trans and non-binary folks, people with disabilities, those of all classes, backgrounds, ages, and identities can thrive. And to support our congregations and communities and their leaders to be sources of justice, equity, compassion, and liberation in your communities. Now, living into this vision is not easy. 
We've seen very publicly where we as Unitarian Universalists have fallen short of this vision. This year, an article in the UU world caused real harm to transgender and non-binary UUs, their families, their allies. It is an example of the gap between our aspirations and our practice, and it demonstrates how we must do better. Since that article ran, the UU world engaged the leadership of transgender religious professional UUs together, trust, and hired a non-binary Unitarian Universalist to edit a must-read collection. Yes, Teresa Soto. <laughs> edited this collection, a must-read collection of essays from transgender and non-binary UUs. This also sparked conversations that will continue about how the Association's magazine supports the mission of the UUA and how we all live into the practice, one that I learned from equal access, nothing about us without us. Let's all say that. This is so important for how we live and move in the world. Nothing about us without us. Let us remember that as a mantra in our work and how we communicate who we are and which voices we lift up to say who this faith is. Another specific situation at the UUA in congregational life moved us to experiment with restorative circles to address broken relationship and harm. We are all human, and we will break covenant. And therefore, we need restorative practices that help us build the muscles of truth-telling, learning from mistakes, owning responsibility and accountability, and building deeper trust in our communities. Finally, for the second year in a row, we have had an increase in complaints regarding professional misconduct. Addressing misconduct is a critically necessary role of the UUA and one that requires deeper investment and comprehensive response systems. This is work we dedicated ourselves to improving many years ago, and we continue to work to make these systems more accessible, transparent, and just, because professional misconduct undermines the power and the liberatory impact and spirit of our faith. In the midst of these mistakes, in the midst of these mistakes and areas of ongoing growth, we have also made important progress on core promises that we made coming out of the disruptions two years ago that called us to dismantle a culture of white supremacy and Unitarian Universalism. Very early in my first year, we implemented new hiring practices aimed at diversity and equity, and I'm pleased to report the impact of these practices. Two years ago, the Leadership Council, which is the senior executive staff of the UUA, was 12 percent people of color. Today, it is 42 percent people of color. Two years ago, the UUA staff as a whole was 19 percent people of color. Today, it is 28 percent people of color. Today, at the UUA, we have identity-based groups for staff of color and indigenous people, for LGBTQ staff, and for trans and non-binary staff. Now, we are not done. This is not over. I am this shows the impact of the changes we've made, but we still have a long way to go, right? But it's a strong move forward. Last year, I reported that we would implement a culture change strategy within the UUA to shift our culture as an organization. And this year, I'm thrilled to share that we have a JEDI team, justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, the JEDI team of the UUA. They are working to identify obstacles to full inclusion that involve power and equity and build the skills we need to create a truly diverse, equitable, and just workplace at the UUA. 
last year. I asked you to be part of our commitment to black lives of Unitarian Universalism for their groundbreaking ministry. Individuals, congregations, and UU institutions, including the UUA, we have pledged over $4.3 million for the Promise and the Practice campaign. And this year, at this General Assembly, we are fulfilling our $5 million commitment to blue. These are significant successes in living into the promise and the practice of who we say we are. But we also know that real change, change that can affect the outcomes for people of color and others staying in our movement and leading this movement, must happen at the congregational level. Right? So here is how the UUA is working to be a strong partner to move change locally. And no surprise, it's all related to mission. Equipping congregations. Last year we said we'd develop resources needed to live into cultural change at the local level. This year, the Faith Development Office created an ever-growing page of resources just for congregations looking to dismantle a culture of white supremacy in your congregation. We also, Faith Development created a white supremacy accountability tool to be used to review congregational religious education programs. And this year, the Central East region held a New Day Rising conference that invited leaders from across the region to share their stories of success and failure in dismantling white supremacy culture. We're looking at this model and a way to bring it to more and more areas. Second mission area, training and supporting leaders. Last year, I reported on the unprecedented number of religious professionals of color facing challenges or conflict in their ministry and our commitment at the UUA to provide better support to these leaders. This year, every region of the UUA committed to individualized support for every religious professional of color. And this has taken a variety of forms, including stronger startups, regular check-ins, helping to develop covenants and coaching for ministers of color entering multi-ministry teams. This year, we are improving our records to better track and understand the realities and trends of religious professionals of color so that we can better serve and support these leaders now and into the future. This year, we made stronger and clearer our commitments, including funding, for the UUA's Finding Our Way Home Retreat and the annual Trust Retreat. And yesterday, we formalized our relationship and financial support for diverse and revolutionary UU Multicultural Ministries drum. <laughs> We know that investing in the leaders who have historically been marginalized in our faith is the way to bring the margins into the center and to truly change the culture of our faith. Our third core mission area is advancing UU values. Earlier I spoke to how real institutional change requires being in accountable relationship with frontline and fenceline communities. This commitment guides both our justice priorities and how we move them. This year we clarified four intersectional justice priorities through a strategic review unlike any undertaken in the last 15 years. This strategic review led to the creation of the organizing strategy team because we realized that what is needed to move justice in this country is power and power is built through organizing. We are shifting our focus to organizing and supporting organizing. The four strategic areas, intersectional justice priorities, are combating criminalization, and that includes mass incarceration and policing, as well as immigrant detention and deportation. Climate justice, 
LGBTQ and gender justice, and electoral organizing. Now, we know that UU congregations are engaged in many different issues and campaigns locally, and this continues. But we also want to model focus and long-term relationship building at the UUA and invite as many people as possible to join us in these four core areas. This year, the UUA supported actions at the border in Arizona and San Diego. We showed up to support Dr. Christine Blasey Ford as she testified during the Kavanaugh hearings at rallies to support reproductive justice and to stand against discrimination targeting LGBTQ people. In November, Unitarian Universalists and the UUA showed up in Florida to help secure the largest voter reenfranchisement since the Voting Rights Act. This is what organizing can do, and this is what our faith community in solidarity with grassroots organizing can do. And then there's Beacon Press. Embracing these pri Beacon Press has embraced these priorities and mission to guide who and what they publish. And the press was on fire this year. Yeah. Woo! As just one example, White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo was on the New York Times bestseller list for over six months. <laughs> but it wasn't just that book. All of these and so many titles have been focused on publishing the voices of leaders of color, focus on organizing, fighting criminalization and racism and, and um, climate justice. And we are seeing the larger community respond to Beacon Press and what they are putting out. It's tremendous. All of this is to say that at the UUA, we are making it our mission to be a faith community that responds to the demands of this time. And there is more ahead. This report is by no means comprehensive. These are just a few examples of system shifts and significant wins we've had this year. You can find out more about the work the UUA does through our brand new free publication, the UUA Amplify Catalog, which lists our many programs, resources, and how you can connect them. None of these big changes or the ongoing core work, core mission work of the UUA would happen without the attention, dedication, and countless hours of your phenomenal UUA staff. Over 200 people who work tirelessly and often fearlessly and certainly faithfully to serve this tradition, our congregations, and our leaders. Would you all on UUA staff who are here in the room rise as you are able? I just want everyone to see you and give you a round. People often ask me what, what the my favorite part of my job is, and it is getting to work with the UUA staff. It is a privilege and a pleasure. Behind me, gathered with me, is the Leadership Council of the UUA. These are the strategic partners with me, with their teams, and with many of you who make our mission and our vision come to life. And we are very pleased to welcome a new addition to our team, Mr. Andrew McGeorge, who is the incoming Chief Financial Officer and Treasurer of the UUA, beginning July 8th. The CFO and Treasurer have a unique role because they are both a part of the staff and appointed by your UUA board. So welcome, Andrew. And I finally want to offer my sincerest gratitude for our outgoing Treasurer and CFO, Tim Brennan. In Tim's 13 years, he's increased the financial health and management of the UUA's resources and made us a leader in socially responsible investing and corporate accountability. And I mean, I just want to lift up one thing. Tim has said yes to mission. Tim has worked closely with Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism over this year. I mean, Tim's commitment is the, one of the 
key financial leaders of our faith in saying yes to dismantling white supremacy culture and getting focused on mission has made such a tremendous difference in what we've been able to do. Thank you, Tim, for your dedication, your service, your leadership. devote the last section of my report. I want to devote this last section of my report to speak to the future, the challenges and the possibilities that lay ahead for who we can be as Unitarian Universalists. In these difficult and dangerous times, we see people doubling down on a deadly status quo rather than choosing to be bold, cooperative and innovative to meet the challenges before us. And this is heartbreaking. This is heartbreaking because it is exactly in times like these when we need audacious leaders and audacious communities that are willing to take bold risks to show a new way forward, one that is life-giving, life-sustaining, life-affirming, and justice-centered. We need to be those people, those audacious leaders and audacious communities fighting for the future and the libera liberation of all people. And to do this, we need each other. And we need to invest more fully and generously in the power and the impact of our congregations and our larger association. A future of increasingly isolated congregations just will not cut it. We need one another. We need one another to be the people that we are called to be. A multiracial, multicultural, multigender, multigenerational future of Unitarian Universalism, and we cannot turn back now from that vision. Our voice, our values, our ability to show up, these matter right now, and they are needed. There is more possibility ahead for our world and our humanity, but we need activists for love and organizers for justice and protectors of democracy. We are just 16 months out from the most critical election in our lifetimes one that will have real and immediate consequences for democracy, for climate justice, for the lives of people of color, for the lives of trans people, for refugees, for women's autonomy, for the freedom of all people. This is a matter, this election is a matter of life and death. And as I said, to the Ministers' Association on Tuesday. This is no time to sit on the fence. This election will have direct consequences for democracy, for climate justice, for our future, for our children, for health care, for the lives of people who live with disabilities. It is a matter of life and death. And so I want to take these themes, and I'd love for the tech deck to go back to that slide. I want to take these themes of action, risk, courage, and mission, and propose to you that we you you the vote. Did you hear that? That we you you the vote. Let us, I want to see you all in your communities make your congregations into voter protection, voter registration, civic engagement, and mobilization centers. Let us show the difference, the power that Unitarian Universalists can make. You know, we already have a reputation as being the people who show up, right? Let's build the re reputation that we are the people that show up and bring others to show up. Right? Don't wait until 2020 
Get those tables set up where you are finding organizations in your community that are doing voter registration, voter education drives right now. Start getting connected. Go out into your neighborhoods. Go into the community and talk to people about the issues, about your values, and about the importance of voting. We need to be getting ready right now for 2020. Start right now. Connect in your community. Who's getting voters out? Who's starting to register and mobilize? Get connected help your people and if it's only a partisan party then just make sure you have information about po both parties right your people can choose who they want to partner with individually and you can help them connect at your congregation we have a choice about who we will be will we choose doubt fear moderation or will we choose mission Courage, boldness, love, generosity, liberation. I know what I will choose. What are you going to choose? Why are you here? <laughs> Where do you put your faith? Let us be bold. Let us be fearless and courageous and let us fight. Fight for what's left of our democracy and build from it. All right? Build those muscles. You, you, the vote. to serve as your president. What an honor. Thank you for this honor. It is my joy to serve with the Board of Trustees, with our fabulous co-moderators, Barb Grieve and Alandria Williams. I love you both. I'm so grateful that the Executive Vice President, Carrie McDonald, my partner in this work, I am grateful to you. And I am inspired by all of what you all of what we are already doing and the ways that we are embracing a deeper practice of our faith and our community and a bolder commitment to risk for solidarity and justice and a more courageous expression of Unitarian Universalism. Let's get ready, everyone. Let's get